afternoon, everybody. Good evening. This is um, the AB617 Portside Community Steering Committee meeting for July. Uh, just reached six o'clock, and so we're going to give folks a little bit of time to log on. My name is Daniela Simunovic, and I'm the facilitator for this evening. Um, if you are on tonight's webinar as a member of the public, you are participating in attendee mode. Um, and if you are a steering committee member or a presenter tonight, part of the presenting team, you are a panelist. So we'll go over some updates at the top of the uh, agenda. We'll go over um, the protocol for how to participate uh, via Zoom. So thank you. Eh, bienvenida a la junta mensual del de comité directivo de las comunidades portuarias de San Diego eh, de AVE 617. Mi nombre es Daniela Simonovich y soy la facilitadora oficial con mi colega Chuy Flores y David Mariscal. I forgot to introduce my co-facilitators, uh, Mariscal and Chuy Flores. Um, eh, si necesitan interpretación para la reunión de hoy, sí tenemos una intérprete que estará interpretando del de inglés al español. Y para acceder a esa interpretación, abajo en el menú hay un eh, lugar donde dice interpretación, que tiene como una imagen de un grupo. Si apretan ahí y ponen español, ahí pueden a, conectarse al canal de español. Y si tienen preguntas, pueden, eh, si abren eh, la ventanilla de participantes, hay una manera de, al lado de su nombre, levantar su mano y ahí pueden levantar su mano virtual para, para avisarnos que necesitan ayuda. So, it's just an uh, introduction that we have interpretation available. Um, at the bottom of your screen on the Zoom menu where there is a globe icon, um, we have English to Spanish interpretation. And if you click on that globe and click Spanish, um, you should be able to uh, access the interpretation. Um, and just a reminder, if you're in attendee mode next to your name, there is, you should have the ability to raise your hand. Um, and if you raise your hand, we can see that and we can call on you to make any comments. Um, so we're gonna give folks a couple of more uh, moments to sign on. I'm going to check the uh, attendance box to see if we have any steering committee members there. Daniela, no, no, Oh, Helen, ¿ya empezaste a interpretar? Um, ¿Qué dijiste? ¿Me escucha, Alicia? Hasta ahorita lo escuché. Ah, ok. ¿Sí la escuchaste? ¿Sí está ahí? Sí, sí me escuchó. Alicia, ¿sí puedes escucharla? Okay, pues con eso, um, vamos a iniciar la junta. With that, we're going to go ahead and start the meeting. Vamos a iniciar la junta. So, uh, again, uh, welcome to the AB617 Portside Steering Committee meeting for July. Um, my name is Daniela Simonovic and my colleague, Chuy Flores, if you want to turn your camera, Chuy, and uh, David Mariscal, we are part of the team Estelano Advisors and Better World Group that help facilitate these meetings each month. And I do see a hand in the attendee box. And Christian Ramirez. Um, um, hi, Christian. Do you have a, do you need interpretation? Okay, Christian. Okay. Um, then I'm going to lower your hand if that's okay. That's fine. Yes. Sorry. I think I was putting myself. An accident. That's okay. No worries. No worries. Um, wonderful. So um, we. So we are the uh, facilitating team, and I want to introduce my uh, my colleague at my site, my uh, co-facilitator at the Air District, Bill Brick, to um, welcome and give some words of introduction as well. I want to thank for everyone for joining us tonight. I know everyone's busy. Uh, we had a busy week. We're going to talk about some of that tonight. And we have some minor changes to our steering committee. Dr. Seidel resigned because COVID-19 duties are keeping her away from attending these meetings. But Dr. Stephanie Yoon, who was the alternate, and is back as the primary, and she will be um, here tonight. So 
Thank you, Dr. Jung, for joining us. Dr. Jung for Maureen Riveron, uh, the Academy community, so she has resigned as well. So, um, tonight, we don't have a lot of time to talk about the makeup of the steering committee itself. That's going to be an agenda item to work with. Note to self and to everyone else, we need to start trying to slow down down because I tend to get talking fast sometimes. Necesitamos hablar the other thing, we did a better job this time of getting the agenda items finalized. We want everything in the Friday before we did a better job, but I guess uh, uploading it to the Friday we did so on today. So um, my apologies. So um, thanks for joining us. Gracias por la Tenemos una junta bastante ocupada, así que empecemos. Helen, um, are you able to? Okay, thank you. I, I think there's some concern with the translation, so uh, hopefully the sound will get better. Um, let me know if it does not. Um, I can hear it. We're going to um, just review um, the objectives for our meeting tonight. Um, because of the fire. The Navy base, we that that is a concern in the community, so we're going to be having an update from the Air District. Uh, we will uh, report, have a report back for the four subcommittees that are working on um, key elements of our community reduction plan. We're also going to have an update from the Air District staff. update. Uh, we will be taking public comments for those of you who have comments related to the fire during that time. And so I will ask attendees, um, uh, our protocol, we'll turn it first to the members of the public for comments. And so if you could just raise your hand. Um, I did have a virtual request from Janice Luna Reynoso. So we will lead with Jan uh, comments from Ms. Reynoso first. Um, and raise your hand too during the time of the agenda item. Um, and then we will take public comments on items not on the agenda. If you have something that is not on the agenda, uh, we'll take comments at that point. And then we'll go into our subcommittee updates. We'll go into the staff update on the Community Emissions Reduction Plan, or SERP. And then we'll go to the CARB presentation on the emissions inventory. And then we'll have a small conversation on the Office of Environmental Justice as a carryover from our last month's meeting. And then we'll finish up with the staff's update on the ozone state implementation plan and we'll close out our meeting. So today is a packed agenda. So we may go a little over eight o'clock and we appreciate everyone's. Um, and, uh, hello, Mayor Sotelo Solis is here. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate your presence. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do the roll call vote. Um, so please, again, Steering committee members, just when I call your name, just uh, say that you're here. So Ashley Rosia Tremonti? Here. Uh, Maisie Hatch in place of Jack Monger today? Maisie, are you here? Okay, Maisie is not here. Um, Sarah Giovi? Yes, I'm here. Sarah. Larry Hofreder? Here. Hey, Larry. Elisa Arias? I'm here. Hey, Lisa. David Flores? Here. Raymond Pe? Raymond, are you here tonight? I don't see, is Chris Stanley here, his alternate? Okay, so we don't have Raymond or Chris. Okay. Uh, Roman Partida Lopez? Here. Hi, Roman. Stephanie Yoon? I'm here. 
Welcome, Stephanie. We're glad to have you as our official member this evening. Jose Marquez Chavez. I'm here. Hey, Jose Marquez. AC Dumal. Present. And Liana Rios, are you here in the participant mode? And have I just not rescued you yet? Um, oh, goodness, I forget Liana's phone number. Uh, Liana, if you're here, can you uh, raise your hand in the box, the attendee box? Okay. Um, we will double check with Liana. Um, I will send her a text. Uh, Filomena Marino is not here. Sandy Naranjo is present. Present. Ted Gotchak. Here. Uh, Hillary Medina is not here. Alicia Sanchez. Okay. Margarita Moreno. Here. Um, I just got a private message that Maisie Hatch is here. She had trouble going off of mute. So Maisie, I've got you here as present. Um, Idma Ortiz. Not here. Uh, Giapsi Gomez. Giapsi is not here. Olympia Andrade Beltran. Not here. Vanessa Contreras. Salvador Razo Abrica. Present. Hey, Salvador. Montserrat Hernandez. Montserrat is not here. And Silvia Calzada. Present. Hi, Silvia. Great. Nice. And Liana, if you are here and if you want to send me a text message, um, that would be great. Um, okay. I do, when, I, I do see Philomena logged on, but she apparently didn't um, answer. Philomena is here? Okay, Philomena. I will mark you as here. Great. So thank you all for that, your patience with that. And I am here. Great, Philomena. I have got you uh, as present. So we've covered updates. So um, now for the steering committee, I'm just going to yeah, call. I'm, if I'm here also. This is Joy. Oh, Joy, hi, yes. And are any alternates that are here? Sorry. Joy is here. Um, any other alternates, if you just want to go and mute and let me know your name, that you're here? Okay, great. Thank you, Joy. Sorry, now that you're an alternate, I, I uh, skip over those. Um, wonderful. Okay, so with that, um, I, if I can just uh, call for a, a motion from a student committee member it, to, in support of approving the minutes from our June meeting and tonight's agenda. Para la agenda de julio. Any concerns? Y si alguien tiene alguna pregunta sobre eso. Yo hago la motion. Yes, Todd Godslack. Alisa de la segunda, ¿alguien más? ¿Todos a favor? Sí. Si pueden poner sí en la chat, está bien. Ahora sí, entonces nuestras minutas están aprobadas. Gracias. Ahora se lo voy a entregar a Bill Brick, que nos va a hablar sobre el incendio de la base naval. Algunos comentarios aquí. Siguiendo esta presentación, vamos a tener comentarios del público y si puede levantar la mano en la caja de participantes. Y después de eso, si alguien más necesita intro de, de español, ahí sé, yo voy a ayudar al intérprete para hacer eso. Entonces, Bill, adelante. Bueno, esta semana fue una semana muy pesada para todos. Y Issues with the communications that we are addressing. Um, I think actually Rob Ryder, our um, AP Air Pollution Control Officer, wanted to address the group as well. Is that correct, Rob? Um, to start off about the communications and response so sure bill um thank you very much um so um we've heard a lot of community concerns um frankly um about the response of, of the district to the fire and just wanted to assure you that we will do better um we met today with um various county departments including the office of emergency services and the department of environmental health to review lessons learned 
um, about, about the response to the fire. And so we will be um, capturing those lessons learned um, in protocols and a plan um, for moving forward um, to address any performance gaps that we experience. And so, and we're also hoping to sit down with the situaciones y, y también en esa junta discutimos cómo podemos comunicarnos mejor, cómo podemos colaborar. Entonces, nada más quisiera darles ese aseguramiento que vamos a hacer las cosas mejor. And, um, uh, you know, um, we appreciate your perspectives. Um, and I'm sure um, um, several of you will give, um, share those with us tonight, and, and we do sincerely appreciate those perspectives. And as we develop plans and protocols um, for um, how to respond in the future you know, in a more effective manner, um, we look forward to um, getting your input on that. So, so with that, I'll, I'll turn it over um, to, to those of the public that want to comment. So thank you very much. I was, I was going to add that once we did get informed about the fire within, you know, about five hours, our people were actually out installing some additional equipment for PM 2.5 monitoring. Uh, at the same time, we sent some people out to take what we call grab samples of gaseous pollutants. We went down to the area where there's initially some, you know, public comments about the smoke. Um, by then, the wind had shifted, so um, we actually followed the, with social media, followed the plume out toward San, San Diego State, and that's where we saw the highest numbers on Sunday. We continued to take additional measurements throughout the week. We published those um, for people to see, and we also did collect some filters, not the standard way of doing it, but we're going to get some metals data out of that. So we have more information coming. Um, you know, it it uh, it was a challenging week, and um, we we've got lots of data, but uh, that doesn't help everybody. So we're here for public comments. Daniela, you're muted. Thank you. I see two steering committee hands up. So um, I will click on those those for uh, those comments from David and Margarita, and then we'll go to Janice in the public. And I see four hands up there. So um, uh, I will go with David, Margarita, and Sandy, and then um, and then we'll go to the public there. And then if we have more steering committee members, I think if we do a three and three, we can. Um, provide everybody a chance to kind of have timely comment. So um, David, go ahead and unmute yourself. Thank you, Daniela. Uh, um, you know, um, from uh, EHC's perspective, I think, um, you know, we, we, we're brutally, brutally honest when we, when we identify failures in, in, in communicating um, Hazardous situations, and I think uh, we've been sharing those with uh, with the district um, as well as with uh, uh, the county supervisors. Um, but there are a lot of questions that need to be answered. Um, what is an emergency response, and why was it so poorly communicated? Um, what is the monitoring plan that's currently active, and what is that? When are those results going to be shared? Um, in response to uh, to responsiveness um, from our analysis, you know there were no samples taken until that evening on Sunday. No samples taken on Monday. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, also no samples taken at the fence line or in close proximity, um, and the lack of public uh, public notification that that presents that huge gap. Um, you know, who is the lead for communicating on an on a emergency like this? Um, and I'm, we're glad that steps are being taken to identify those gaps for response. Um, but why is this not a part of the, of the overall San Diego County emergency site and app that notifications for fire? Um, and, you know, coordinating with, uh, with the Navy is going to be important moving forward to make sure that any um, 
of those results also are shared with the community and we can continue to understand the impact um, to, to Portside residents. Um, so, you know, a lot of questions um, and we expect that um, results will be shared um, to the public. Um, and we wanna thank uh, the mayor for, uh, for her proactiveness in getting the word out um, as, as quickly as, as she could possibly do that. Um, but there was no other um, public notification or official statement. And that was a very, very unfortunate uh, for a community that's already, as we know, very impacted. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, so we'll go to uh, uh, Margarita. Margarita, si quiere proceder con su com comentario y yo voy a traducir por usted. Okay. Si quiere hablar un poquito lento y me da una oportunidad de, o si quiere hablar y pausa y... Soy, yo soy residente de National City y creo que no, no, no está, no hay una, un, algo que, que pueda prevenir o que, que estén preparados para prevenir eso y poder actuar rápidamente. Aparte no hubo información muy, muy rápido. So, uh, my name is Margarita Moreno. I'm a resident of National City, and I do believe that we need to improve preparation for how for how we can prevent these situations, um, and also how uh, you know in this specific incident, their information was not made available in a timely manner to the community. La comunidad estábamos como preocupados porque en realidad no supimos bien qué fue lo que pasó porque se quemó, o, o sea, no se nos informaba nada, nada más olíamos que olía quemado todo el tiempo como llanta quemada y nos des... entre HC nos mandó información que no saliéramos de las casas, pero en sí, en la base naval no de información para que uno se, se pudiera proteger un poco. So, um, as you know, we were as community residents were very worried. We didn't know what was happening. No formal information was provided to us, but we all we could do was smell the fire, which smell, smelled the smoke, which smelled like tires burning. Uh, we were able to receive information from Environmental Health Coalition EHC, um, advising us to leave our to not leave our homes, and um, but we received no formal information from the from the Navy base. A mí me gustaría que si es que van a implementar algo, hacer algo para un futuro que toda, a, a toda, la información, toda la información que fuera también para la comunidad, para que uno estuviera enterado cómo es que van a, a trabajar ellos. So I think if uh, any changes are going to be implemented, I think it's important to talk, have better communication for how information will be provided to the community about actions that will be taken. Eso es todo. Muchas gracias. That's all. Gracias, Margarita. Um, and then, um, Sandy, if you want to go ahead, and then we'll go to members of the public. Thank you. Thank you, Danella. Hi, good evening, everyone. AB 617 committee. Um, this is Sandy Naranjo. I'm with Mothers on Front and also a National City resident. Um, last week, our community's fear of what could happen happened when the Navy ship fire occurred. For hours, we had no idea what to do with the slow or lack of response from the Navy, agencies, and other entities involved. I really want to thank Mayor Alejandra Sotelo Solis for the advisory, also the Port of San Diego for pulling an emergency fund to provide hotels for residents impacted, and Emily Weir and Supervisor Nathan Fletcher um, for doing the best they can and response they could in that time. And also, too, most importantly, the Environmental Health Coalition for doing everything that they could to protect our residents when toxic smoke was entering into our living rooms. As we know, our communities are overburdened with toxic pollution and suffer respiratory and other health issues associated with the pollution. Our for, unfortunately, our communities, there is a link between COVID and air pollution, where our communities have an 8% increased chance of dying. On top of all that, we had to shelter in place with the fumes and worst of all, not knowing exactly what we were breathing. So what I would like to know is exactly what are the steps for transparency and accountability? One, can the community get a report exactly what had happened on the Navy ship? B, can we have an emergency plan that the Navy can provide and share with APCD and the community so we can be better prepared? 
and see can there be other resources for those that are most vulnerable that may not have the ability to evacuate when things like this happen. So I hope that we can have that put together because we cannot afford another incident. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Um, so with that, we're going to open it up to the members of the steering committee, uh, I mean, of the public. Um, so we'll take um, three comments from here and then we'll go back to the steering committee and then we'll come back. So we'll do three and three. Um, so I have Janice Luna Reynoso first, then followed by Jacqueline and Cristian. So I'm going to go ahead and unmute you, Janice, um, and you can go ahead and speak. I'm sorry, my computer's freezing. Greetings and good evening. Buenas tardes uh, to the committee, to all of you present. Thank you for this opportunity. My name is Janice Luna Reynoso, lifetime resident of National City and founder and executive director of Mundo Gardens, a community garden and social justice organization. Uh, we're definitely impacted by this instance of air pollution and long time effects of environmental racism. Let's just call it what it is. Okay, my children right now cannot breathe. You know, they're getting tested. It's coming back negative from the COVID. And it's really scary as a mother. And it's also terribly disappointing being a, a public servant, a worker in public health, trying to bring, you know, green spaces and clean up air and planting trees when we have such a, a setback as this. We're still waiting for our air purifiers, you know, some of my neighbors as well, and masks. You know, where, where are the, the very practical resources you know, some type of funding that might immediately um, relieve us of our, of our lack of being able to breathe. Um, but also just, you know, thinking along the lines of other resources that can be provided to our community. We are already at a 60% six, chance of um, dying from chronic diseases because of environmental injustices, lack of access to healthy foods, green space. Now with COVID, and on top of that, we're looking at another 10%. So seven out of 10 of us are predestined for poor health due to industry, due to lack of planning or very um, intentional planning that does not take our health into consideration. It is beyond frustrating and saddening. So where are we now as parents, as organizers, working with public servants and really advocating for the basic, basic necessities of life? Fresh air, air that's not going to make us sicker tomorrow. That is not gonna make us what? Are we gonna find out that this air is going to make us sicker 20 years from now, as we do a lot about a lot of other things that then conveniently come up? So please provide the data. Let us know what you're going to do about it. Also, you know, how many gardens are you gonna help us raise up? How many trees are you gonna help us plant? Will you help us advocate to our public servants here at the city so that our green spaces are not closed down? Let's work together, let's call it what it is. Let's make sure that we're proactive and that we name the problem so that we can then solve it. And I would like those questions answered if you have an opportunity to speak to them today, um, I would greatly appreciate it so that we can have this, um, this conversation can continue and we can really work on this together. Thank you. Thank you. And um, Jacqueline, you are next. And so um, I've allowed you to talk so you can go ahead and unmute yourself and uh, proceed. Thank you. Hello, I'm here to advocate advocate and urge the Navy as well as the Air Pollution Control District to release the cause of the fire, display all information about toxins in the fire and implement emergency preparedness and provide additional resources to our communities for the damage it has done to our public health. My name is Jacqueline. I'm Yolanda's granddaughter. I am Simi and Jim Michelle's sister. I am Michael and Julia Michelle's niece. I'm Omri, Orion, Cian, and Diego's cousin. I am Lexus, Raul, Aaliyah, and David's friend. I'm also here today because I love them and I believe their lives, their stories, and their health matter. And they are also irreplaceable. They are the part of the community here who are often overburdened and suffer from multiple sources of pollution in San Diego. When I also heard the news, like, as, like Sandy said, about the Harvard recently published study that stated that community members who are exposed to long-term toxic pollution have an 8% increase in dying due to COVID. This coupled with the recent event of a fire burning for several hours before the ACPD notified residents led me to believe that you all needed a reminder that we are people. We breathe, we dream, and we hurt. We hope for more and are continuously let down. On my loved ones collateral damage and your failure to respond and act accordingly. Will they suffer for the rest of their lives and their children's, children's lives? 
while we don't know how much or for how long their life will be impacted by the almost instantaneously symptoms that were felt due to the lack of air quality, because the Navy has yet to disclose the materials that went up in flames. I demand that the Navy and APCD step up, taking accountability for putting our health in jeopardy in the midst of a global pandemic. Publishing the contents of what was burned and engulfed our city in smoke and fumes is not doing us a favor. It is an obligation that the Navy as an entity occupying residential spaces and a stolen bay must oblige to. It is a non-negotiable request for it is our birthright to operate in a safe and healthy environment. And should that natural law be violated, it is your duty as ACPD to have the information and details of what happened accessible so that every member of this city can begin our journey back to optimal health. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Jacqueline. Um, next in the line is Cristian Ramirez. And Cristian, you can go ahead and speak. Thank you so much, Daniela, and members of the committee. My name is Cristian Ramirez. I am the policy director for the Service Employees International Union, United Service Workers West. We represent 47,000 workers throughout the state of California, primarily in the janitorial uh, security industries and also at the airports. I am a 20 year resident of the historic Barrio District in the city of San Diego. Um, I could see the smoke of this burning ship go on for days and days and days from the front porch of my home in Sherman Heights. It is unexcusable that we had no response from the city of San Diego. I do want to thank Mayor Solis, Sotelo Solis, for her leadership. And if it wasn't for her alerting us of what ha was happening in, in, to the neighbors uh, to the south of us, you know, we here we wouldn't have, have found out about what, what was causing this terrible smoke that we had to deal with for days. To be quite honest, uh, we're literally sick and tired of just the criminal actions of the U.S. Navy in our community. They have poisoned us for far too long. I am a cancer survivor. I'm asthmatic. So is my son. And so is virtually everyone I know in my community. And to add insult to injury, to have the U.S. Navy's first statement say something to the effect that we had nothing to worry about because all that was burning were rags and papers, this adds insult to injury. This is a 21st century. We're two decades in into this new century. And yet the Navy continues to operate as though it has I was operated from day one when it came to our community. So today we're not asking, we are demanding to do what's right. And what's right is for you to help us get the information that we need so that we could prepare ourselves yet again for another wave of toxicity that will inevitably kill members of our community. So I will urge you to do what's right, to share the data that needs to be shared with our community, to take immediate steps to demand that the federal government provides us with the resources that we need to prepare our community for the inevitable consequences of this unexcusable lack of response. It is very clear to us that if this ship would have burned anywhere on the other side of the bay, in Coronado or up the coast in the wealthy communities, that the response would not have been as slow and, and negligent as it was. This is clearly an act of racism that is compounded by the lack of responsiveness that the federal government has done in response to this terrible crisis that we're suffering with COVID-19. So today, I'm usually not this angry when I speak to public servants, but I just don't have the words anymore, folks, to tell you that the time for action has come and the time to hold whoever was responsible for this inferno to be brought into accountability and to provide the answers that we need so that our community could finally have peace of mind as we're not only dealing with a pandemic, but now we're also dealing with a criminal and unjustifiable slow response from the Navy. And now come to find out, it seems that the Navy has absolutely no response to put the community uh, first when there's a crisis like this. That is shameful. 
and it has to stop, and it has to stop today. Thank you, Thank you Christian. Um, so with that, um, Silvia Calzada uh, from the steering committee uh, asked that we defer to the community first. And so we'll finish with the community and then we'll come back to the steering committee where um, we have Silvia and Filomena also that has asked so um, in private chat. Um, so with that, um, Mayor um, Sotero Solis, would you like to, Sotero Solis, sorry about that. Um, please go ahead and let me unmute you. And you should be able to talk now. Can you hear me? Now we can hear you, go ahead. Okay, great, thank you so much. Um, I just wanna again thank uh, the committee for the opportunity to uh, uh, address and you know share with you some of the things that I uh, had the opportunity to um, be um, made aware of and also to uh, the conversations that we've had with Mr. Ryder here. Thank you so much for, you know, being part of, you know, a solution. Uh, so you can hear my little ones in the background and that's who we are trying to keep the environment healthy and ready for. Um, and this is not the first time a uh, plume has displaced uh, members of the community of National City. I remember being displaced uh, as a student at Kimball Elementary School. Um, and so it's uh, very scary that it's happening again. Um, and so know that as mayor, yes, I'm very proud to have put out that advisory. How was, um, you know, after hours of burning and waiting to see what other agencies were going to, you know, share some insight. And we took, a, took it upon ourselves to, to do that because we want to make sure that our community feels empowered. The second thing is, um, you know, as we're speaking with, uh, you know, Navy leadership, it's really important that our community recognize that um, we're pushing them. We are saying we are, we got to be good neighbors, but that means you have to share with us, um, you know, information uh, as to, you know, what is burning? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's always interesting when we hear, you know, the big T word, it's toxic, it's not toxic. <laughs> what exactly does that mean? Um, and I think we, we have to be impressed and I appreciate the comments made earlier from my colleagues here uh, to talk about what exactly um, uh, was in the air. Recognizing that uh, Robert um, shared that in fact that the winds patterns had shifted um, and I think that that made a big difference as to when and what was captured in the readings. So the other thing is that within, um, you know, a couple days of the fire, uh, National City did receive a monitor, um, you know, through the APCD. So we will now be able to monitor that. And I have offered, you know, our public spaces to be that, uh, to open up. We are surrounded by freeways. So I will be open to, um, you know, uh, uh, pro providing more space for that. And uh, as I wrote in the chat, I think this is the start of a discussion on how we as a municipality, along with the environmental groups, along with all of the regulatory agencies with the Navy, uh, really have an in-depth discussion on how emergencies on the base can be addressed by our emergency operation systems, the county's emergency operations, so who is the trigger and how does that, how, how does that then get followed up with uh, the various other elected officials and or agencies. Um, so I really appreciate, you know, the opportunity to share this. Um, but as I um, shared uh, again in the comments, it's really important that we know what the role is of uh, the Air Pollution Control District and really making sure that we can provide all those elements as an educational space to our residents, both English, Spanish, Tagalog, and that if they see something, or in this case, smell something, they can call and um, start the process. Uh, so uh, again, uh, thank you so much. And um, we're here and this is just the beginning, that's for sure. So thank you again on behalf of the City of National City. Um, muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much, Mayor. So um, we're gonna go, we're gonna finish out the public, members of the public. Um, so we'll go with Klaus Kolki next, and then followed by Lori Saldana and Semilla Martinez.
Vasquez, and then after Semilla, we will go back to the steering committee, where I have um, Silvia Calzada, Filomena Marino, and Alicia Sanchez in the queue to speak from the steering committee. So go ahead, Chris. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you for uh, everybody involved for putting this together. Um, this is a really important dialogue that we need to have. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ryder, for hearing us out and, and um, being responsible for uh, making sure that all this gets done. Um, so I, I want to start off with um, our experience uh, that we had here in our, um, well, first of all, let me introduce, uh, fully introduce myself. My name is Klaus Kolke. I'm, uh, my, and my wife's next to me. Hi, I'm Veronica. Uh, we are uh, National City uh, residents. Uh, we have a business. We have businesses in in Barrio Logan. My wife Veronica is uh, born and raised Barrio Logan. Um, I also serve on the Barrio Logan Planning Group. I am the president of the Logan Avenue Consortium. So um, we get to see it from both neighborhoods. Um, so our experience that on Sunday was early it was uh we smelled it around eight nine o'clock mm -hmm. uh well actually my wife veronica did <laughs> and um we reacted quickly because uh as we looked out our window we could see the plume smoke from our living room and uh realizing that it was black and white smoke and what we were smelling you know we we're able to put two and two together and um realized that this was not a good scenario for us as a family unit uh, for our neighbors, for our neighborhood, our community. Um, so we evacuated our home. Fortunate enough for us that we were we have the means to be able to do that, to go uh, rent a spot um, and be away from the, the fumes. Um, but, you know, it, this is COVID times. Um, that doesn't mean that you know, we were able to do it at the moment, but I don't know. I mean, the, the port's response was a few days late in, in offering us hotel vouchers, but, you know, the air had cleared by then. You know, I, I appreciate the effort, but it was three days too late. Um, I, I really don't understand how a, a branch of the U.S. Uh, military can uh, drop the ball on this so, so hard. Or so badly. Um, I know they take a lot of pride and being efficient and, and you know this this machine. Um, it, it it really like blows me away that this happened here, and that the response was so poor. Um, if there was military lives on that ship, I'm sure the reaction. I know there was, but if you were to treat the entire ship as part of the um, the people that were on board the ship. I don't understand why it wasn't um, gone about it in that, in that manner. Um, the response, uh, the uh, as my, my friend Christian had uh, noted, saying that it was that the contaminants coming in from the ship were were biased or not biased but um, non toxic. Uh, that's ridiculous. It's a ship. It's not like well, it doesn't matter. You can burn a piece of wood and it's toxic. Um, you can burn some grass. It's toxic. It's a ship. It's metal, wires. Who knows? Who else knows what's on that thing? Um, that was that. That part right there was really insulting. I, as being community members, I put it out there on Facebook and Instagram because friends of mine were, you know, saying that, you know, oh, you know, let's, you know, pray for the people that were fighting the fire. I said that's great and all. Do you know what the impact of this, the long-term impact that this is going to have on our neighborhoods, our kids? Um, I really don't understand any of, of how that went down and how irresponsible it was. Um, this is just a fire. We, we smell fumes coming from the yards on a monthly basis. Fumes, paint, it's toxic. I'm not even sure what goes on over there, but we smell it on a daily the, at the very least on a monthly basis. Uh, the impact that it has, the neighbor yards have on our neighborhoods is beyond all of this. Um, we, we, need, we need to have a better response. We need to have better communication. We, we need to see some actions being fulfilled. 
we keep saying this, we keep having these conversations, but it's, it's always the same. Um, I'm here. I'm here to listen. If you guys need to reach out to more community members, I'm here to listen. I, I have ties with National City and Barrio Logan. I'm here to try to have some solutions to some of these items. Thank you, Klaus. We appreciate that. Um, is there anything you'd like to add or can we go ahead and move on to the next comment? No, I'm good. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, Lori Saldana, uh, I've now allowed you to talk, so you should be able to unmute yourself if you want to go ahead. Okay, good evening. Thank you for um, allowing us to participate. I have posted a lot of my questions in the chat because I think it is important that um, an after action report be done and made available to the public as soon as possible. Um, and I really would encourage this working group to, to hold some public hearings and allow more people to come and testify and invite the Department of Defense and representatives from the Navy to be part of that. Uh, when I served in the legislature, after we had wildfires and people were displaced, we held hearings on emergency response and what we can do better. And interagency communications, I, I don't, as many people have said, uh, that the, the local government was not notified very quickly and the emergency notices were not sent out to people. And I have to tell you, I live 15 miles north of the shipyard and I had a headache Monday morning because it just happened that the weather was such that we had a south, um, the air was out of the south and I could smell the, the fumes all the way up at, at my house, 15 miles to the north of the shipyards. And I had to shut all the windows and I had a headache. And I'm wondering, are you going to develop any kind of follow-up medical evaluations for people who believe they were impacted by the smoke and the, the toxics in the plume? I think that it's really up to county health and human services to ask people to identify if they believe they were affected by this so you can track the impact of this. While South Bay is historically uh, hurt the hardest, and I, I, I understand with COVID, with other air impacts, air quality impacts, uh, the South County area is definitely hit harder, but this was a regional uh, near disaster, and it affected many, many people throughout San Diego. So I would really encourage the County Health and Human Services and Department of Defense to invite people to identify themselves if they feel that they were impacted by this, create a database for those who believe that they may have impacts, and track their health over time. Because especially for children, we may not see the impacts of this for years to come. But I, I think that for the Navy to just walk away from this and think it's it's over, uh, it's not over. The impacts of this is going to affect people for many years to come. And it's it, important for county health to identify those who did have headaches, who did feel sick, who had no place to go. And uh, all of those things, I really encourage you to do as part of a long-term improvement for uh, community health um, in the South County, but really regionally. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Saldana. So we'll go from the last comment in the public uh, to Samia Marquez, and then we'll go back to the list from the steering committee. Um, so go ahead, Samia, you should be able to unmute yourself. Hi, uh, my name is Samia Luna. I reside in National City and spend most of my time in Logan Heights. I want to demand that the Navy and the Air Pollution Control District and all other agencies to release the cause of the fire as well as display information about the toxins released by the fire and implement emergency preparedness and provide additional resources and even compensation to our communities for the damage that was inflicted to our public health. We are the most overburdened and vulnerable to multiple types of toxic pollution in addition to the already toxic air that we breathe, the ship on fire that happened on 712 caused us to suffer greatly and be exposed to more toxins and worsen our air quality. We were not notified by the APCD until late in the evening, and the Navy even downplayed the seriousness of the event by claiming that the fire had no toxins, even though it has not been shared what the tech what um, type of chemicals were burned. By not being transparent and lying there and saying there are no toxins you have, um, the Navy has not only threatened my health 
but has not taken any responsibility for the harm that they've caused. How is it that there are no toxins yet the smell of burnt plastic lingered for days? This is unfair to me and my community and that we have inhaled fumes that we don't know the impact that they have on my health. Um, immediately when the fire um, happened, I felt the negative impacts on my health from the toxins released. For days, I was feeling woozy, lightheaded, my sinuses were burning, I had congestion and allergies, and experienced headaches all day, and, and as well as a dry cough. Currently, and I, I am experiencing shortness of breath and feel that my asthma has been triggered by this pollution, and I am having breathing issues now. Because of these symptoms, I also got tested for COVID, and I came back negative. Um, but I, I just want to ask that the Navy and that the APCD step up and take accountability for the mishandling of the fire and uh, do this by widely publishing the list of all materials that were burned in the fire as well as implement emergency preparedness plan that ensures each community member can get informed, even those that may not have access to the internet and provide additional resources to those who may not have had the means to evacuate or even um, our houseless community that was affected by this. I ask that you make sure that everybody's health who was impaired, not just um, by this fire, but the pollution, that, uh, yeah, the pollution that has been present in our community and have the resources to better um, our health, whether it be through compensation, air purifiers for each household, plants that act as air purifiers, access to better health care, and more advocacy on immune boosting foods and the accessibility to them. Um, we need for you or the Navy to provide holistic medicine for those affected to heal our bodies. And I really do hope that you and the Navy listen to our demands and that we are not overlooked because this has been happening for far too long and we need to have justice for our community. Um, thank you for, for your time and for um, having this open to the public as well. Thank you, Simia, and thank you everyone for your public comment. Um, I'm going to turn it back to the steering committee um, for comments first from Silvia Cal then Filomena Marino, then from Alicia Sanchez, and we'll, um, we'll give the last, um, then we'll finish up with AC Dumal, who uh, has his hand up, who is the U.S. Navy representative on our steering committee. So, um, Silvia, if you want to go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Daniela. Um, first of all, I'm listening to all these public comments because it is very important that they provide that point of view that living experience experience that uh, mental stress that that Navy fire provided to many of us. Uh, so I thought that that would be a great opportunity for them to open up what they were feeling. Uh, um, on my end, I was also, I am currently a resident of National City. I am a military family member. I had my great grandfather serve in the US Navy and serve in the World War II. I was also my uncle. I have family members who are currently serving in the US Navy. Uh, and one of my uh, cousins, Victoria, currently serves. She just came back from the North Side. And when I heard about this fire, the first thing that came into my mind was could Victoria be in this ship? Could she be in the ship dealing with so much uncertainty? That was one perspective. And on my personal view in her situation, she's already going through so much personal. But on the other side, as a resident, it was even more stressful. Why? Because I am a caregiver. I have two burn can you pronounce, vulnerable uh, parents. One who is my father, he's in dialysis, my mother who has heart disease. And with this COVID situation and add to that, it was very, not only physically, but mentally exhausting. Um, and 
also because with the support of this community here where we live in, in Paradise Creek, uh, if it wasn't for that cohesion and that communication between the communities, I wouldn't have found out about this. We currently have a group on, on social media and this is how I found out after 11 o'clock in the morning till noon. From my understanding, this happened at 8.30 approximately. And over four hours passed before I could actually see a video where 10 News was providing and it was actually posted by one of our neighbors. Four hours passed already. Knock on wood, but thank God this did not add into ex an explosion, a big explosion. Somehow we are protected. But at the same time, to hear that this is a learning lesson, it's like when I go back to say, I won't say names, but it, it says a quote that they mentioned, what difference does this make of going back to the past and reviewing this? It does make a difference, a very important difference because it affected many of us, especially me who has asthma and some other young children who were very uh, stressed because of the situation or not knowing what was happening, but, but they were smoking. They were smelling that smoke and coughing, and it is very sad to hear that. Um, and also to think that I just found out that the Navy, it's unbelievable, but I just heard it. I hope I'm wrong, uh, but there is no existing emergency response plan. Coming from the U.S. Navy, I worked with the U.S. Navy for so many years, and I've never heard that before, especially right here, the U.S. Navy, right next to the ships, not one ship, more than three ships or more. They must have that. For me, not having a response plan, it's a crime against humanity. And I'm so passionate at this point and very upset because like Christian Ramirez mentioned, and I'm so applauded for that because it's unacceptable. It is unacceptable. And thank God things didn't get bigger. You could say that. But uh, I think the Navy needs to, like they say, man up. I'm sorry to say that, but they do need to do that. So thank you for the space. Thank you, yeah. Thank you for sharing. Um, so Filomena Marino and then Alicia Sanchez, and then um, we'll let AC um, have the uh, opportunity to respond to all the comments at the end. Um, so uh, Filomena, if you would like to go ahead. Yes, thank you. Um, thanks very much everyone here. Uh, I don't know what audience I have for the Navy or the support district or National City of San Diego, but I want to thank everyone. This is a challenge to the Navy and to the entire community. It also presents an opportunity. It's an interesting challenge. And I know that I, I'm hearing a lot of people, uh, even though they're muted. Immediate reprieve, reprieve was offered by the Port Authority, National City Mayor, and the Environmental Health Coalition. What did not occur um, has already been mentioned by all of my community members here on this call but what can be done better? Um, I wanna present a few ideas that came from my immediate neighbors. And one, first one, emergency contingency update to include community notification to address the hazmat chemical fires. They could easily have used the state of the art speaker system that they currently have installed throughout the Navy base yard to send out a notification. So that can be done better, just improve the emergency contingency update improve a terrorism watch to include a security perimeter for a minimum of five mile radius. This includes food traffic, car traffic alerts, homeless footprint, campsites. Why? It would be easier for law enforcement, Navy police, and us, the residents, to support anti-terrorism. In addition, it would also help reduce air emissions by reducing the carbon footprint of car traffic. Third, enforce the current truck route ordinance that was so 
uh, it was placed into effect by Environmental Health Coalition to support us neighbors. Why? In addition to reducing air emissions, this benefits the emergency contingency plan. Fourth, air pollution monitors to include toxic chemical detection, but allow earlier months ago, possibly a year ago, we there were the question was as to where should we put air pollution monitors? And I think now there's an opportunity for the Navy to be have a be more open to have them on their own site. And that's in. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Filomena. Um, ahora, Alicia Sánchez, si, si quiere eh, hablar, eh, puede, puede proceder. Hola, buenas tardes. Eh, yo también soy uh, presidente de aquí de National City. Estoy muy preocupada por lo que nos está pasando desde el domingo pasado. Este, mi esposo pasa por problemas también de cáncer, este, entonces él tiene muchos problemas uh, pues, respiratorios también. Quisiera, no sé si se alcance a ver cómo es, él, él utiliza un fil, una máquina para respirar todas las noches, porque necesita, perdón. So, para que todos vean. So, good morning, my name is Alicia Sánchez. I'm the city. I'm very worried about what's been happening in our community since last Sunday. Uh, personally, my husband uh, suffered from cancer, and in addition to his cancer, he also deals with many respiratory issues. I would like to show you all the, the breathing machine that he uses to be able to sleep at night. Okay, see you guys. Así es como pone el filtro, no sé si... Ay, perdón, no sé si lo alcanzan a ver. Blanco. Quisiera ver, quisiera enseñárselos cómo fue que amaneció el lunes. Perdón, aquí está. Así amaneció el lunes. That is how, um, that is on Monday, the filter for the breathing, uh, sleeping. Um. Entonces, es, se me hace un poco triste que la, que la naval esté diciendo que no tiene tóxicos lo que arrojó el humo. Esto que parece este, uh, que sucedió con el filtro, eso quiere decir que hubo muchas partículas muy pequeñas y muy dañinas que sé que al futuro vamos a tener problemas aquí en National City. So, based on the, the, uh, the toxic emissions and that his filter was able to capture, I am sure that there are very toxic, small particulate matters that were floating in our air that it affected us that will have consequences in the future for our public health. que tomaran en cuenta este, la, la preocupación de la comunidad y este, que hubiera, que tengan ellos una manera de, en una emergencia como la que sucedió, se sabe que fue un accidente, tal vez fue un accidente, queremos, queremos creer eso, queremos que también ellos tengan una, una manera de, de prevenir estos, estos incidentes que puede con, contaminar a la comunidad. No, we ask again that their consideration be given to the community concerns um, in, that occurred in an emergency, like this, like what happened on Sunday, which was an emergency, um, very likely a, an accident. Um, but we believe that actions should be taken to prevent future incidences like this. Muchas gracias por tu, por tu espacio. Este, y pues esperemos que no traiga muchas consecuencias malas. Thank you for your consideration, and we hope that there aren't the negative consequences of this aren't aren't too detrimental to our health. Um, okay, with that, um, I am going to have um, I'm going to have AC Dumal respond, and then I do see one more comment from Jeanette Reyes. And if anyone else has any comments, um, we I do want to pause and say that you know we do have business. Sorry, there are sirens in downtown Los Angeles where I'm located in the background. Uh, but we do have business, so I, I do, I want to propose some, after we finish the comment on the Navy fire, I'm going to propose some changes to the agenda tonight um, so that we can um, have uh, our presentations. I also want to share to the members of the public that are here this evening, this is a monthly steering committee that meets uh, to develop a broader plan for how to reduce air pollution in, in uh, Barrio Logan, Sherman Heights, National City, and the Portside communities. And so we are looking for community members so if people are interested in joining us monthly meetings to be, be a part of the planning development we encourage you to to apply
apply. Um, so I am going to go to um, AC Dumal, and then we'll go back to the members of the public. AC, if you want to go ahead. Thank you. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, so um, as you understand, this is a, a disaster of unprecedented circumstances. And Navy is still trying to work very hard at understanding. As you know, we spent over a week, try, a, a week trying to put out the fire. And now we are in that stage of just trying to understand it. As you know, we are, Navy is committed um, to continue to work with the community uh, and APCD and the regulatory agencies uh, through this challenging time. Um, we are fortunate that no lives were lost during the explosion and we, um, and at this time, we are now trying to listen and understand uh, the impacts the fire had on this community. I can honestly say that we are deeply sorry for the impact the smoke had on the community members. We are trying very hard to understand and look forward to working better with the community and our neighbors to communicate, to have better communications. Um, as we are investigating this fire, we, will, uh, we are absolutely being transparent in terms of sharing information as it comes forward. At this time, you know, we still do not know. But we just ask you to please continue to work with us. Um, so, you know, something like this in the future, we will have better, better response. And, and at the same time, we want to understand your needs. So um, that's all I have to say, but thank you. And uh, we, look, we do look forward to working with the communities and uh, in this trying time. Thank you. Great, so we'll go to Jeanette Reyes. Um, so, Jeanette. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, um, good evening, uh, my name is Jeanette Reyes. Um, I am a resident of National City and um, I have to tell you, I'm very disappointed of the U.S. Navy for the lack of preparation and the delay of the response with the community. Um, as of right now, um, you know, National City is in, in a red zone for pollution, plus COVID-19 is, is hitting us really hard. And now we have to stress out, you know, on this, on this issue. Um, we, are, we are your neighbors and you have a big responsibility with this community. So we are demanding an explanation, not an excuse. And we are also demanding information of you know, what we and our children potentially are gonna be dealing with this um, you know, when it comes to our health. So um, this is very much it. Um, thank you very much for your time. And Klaus, uh, we, we are running a little bit late, so I'm gonna ask if you have, since you've already spoke at length, if you could just maybe limit your comment very brief to like less, to less than a minute if possible, and then, um, and then we'll go. Thank you. Yes, definitely. Uh, just, a, just a quick um, comment. Uh, so we're, we're focusing a lot on, on air quality. Uh, and just one thing I wanted to bring to the table was that, you know, we're not, we're not speaking on the impact on the environment, on the marine life and water quality of the bay. It's just another layer of uh, pollution that, um, that has to be dealt with within the waters of the bay. And, you know, I, I'm a big proponent of um, using the, our waterways and oceans as um, recreation and and be, being able to feed ourselves. A lot of community members use the bay to fish and be able to do so. Um, so I would like to see uh, further reports on that and have that be addressed as well. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to maybe give Rob the last word and then we can close up this item um, and then we can head to uh, proceed to the next item in the agenda. Very, very important and, and sobering to hear. So thank you all um, for sharing your, your, your concerns. Um, a lot of great suggestions um, coming out of this as to how to move forward. Um, I took uh, copious notes um, and I do look forward to working um, with the community more and with the Navy. Um, really the frustration I have frankly is the, uh, is the APCD's initial response time. Um, that's, that's what we have to um, improve on. Um, it, it, some have noted it, it was late in the day before we issued our smoke advisory. 
And um, please know that um, I didn't know the fire was occurring. I, I was actually out of town and, um, um, you know, perhaps I should you know, we'll put on our website who exactly to call in such situations so that this will never happen again. Um, as soon as we found out, we did act, but we found out too late. And, um, and so we, we will improve that uh, moving forward. I, I, there was a lot of good ideas today. Um, um, I'll just mention in, um, also, um, we have issued a citation to the Navy um, for, for the um, community impacts, for the smoke impacts. Um, that's that's a, a long process, but as part of that process to, to settle um, um, the, the notice of violation that we issued for, for violating air, air pollution standards, um, we will learn a lot more um, about what happened in time and, and we will be as transparent as we're able to be. Um, and at, at the end of that process, um, there, there may be um, a, a settlement, um, a financial settlement, and that would be an opportunity to invest back in the community um, um, some of those settlement funds. So we're a ways away from that. There, it's a procedural process um, that we, we, we're, we're just starting, but I just want to assure you that um, um, we hear you and, and, um, and, 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 and please continue to hold us accountable. Um, and let, let this never happen again. That's, um, and so, and that's on APCD shoulders to do what it can. And so, so we will, it's, it's the initial response time. Uh, admittedly, we could improve, um, uh, you know, probably we'll find out other ways um, to improve, but it was the initial response and, and we just didn't know. And I'll just put it that way. It, 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 um, and, and that's unacceptable that we didn't know until too late in the day. So um, um, I just want the community to know that. Um, so thank you very much. So I'm going to call on Julie Corrales. Um, we are running a little bit late in the agenda, Julie, so I'll ask you to be brief, but I'm going to, um, oops, let me allow you to speak here. I lost you in my queue. Um, give me one second. Um, Julie, you should be able to unmute yourself now and go ahead. Hi, uh, Julie here. Um, I just um, wanted to echo all the uh, community's comments. Um, I think it's utterly important that we know the toxins that were in the air. Um, uh, there was a community member who was talking about it, creating a database so that we can track the effects of the toxins that folks breathed in. I think that's um, pertinent and something that we need to, to move to the top and, and really implement. Um, I need to know what my children, my children breathed in um, those few days to know uh, what we can look out for in the future. And we don't know what we're going to have to tell doctors in the future. And these are, it, it's sad and it's horrible, but it's real concerns uh, in our community. So I just wanted to um, bring that to the top and say that we need to track this. We need a database. I agree with that comment and we need to know what's in the toxins. Thank you. Thank you, Julie, for your comment and for your brevity. And thank you everybody for your a moving testimony this evening and again this is an air quality focus group so as we're talking about air quality and we're looking for more members of the public to join our steering committee so you can go to the ad 617 website uh, which you probably went to to log into this meeting to register for this meeting to find the applications to join and to um, continue this conversation um, with that steering committee members i'm going to um, make a suggestion for to keep us a little bit uh, on track with the agenda. Um, I'm going to ask the subcommittee updates to be a little bit briefer tonight, if that's okay, Larry, David, and Ashley. Um, uh, we are going to propose, uh, with the blessing of Sandy from the chat, that we table the discussion on the Office of Environmental Justice until next month's meeting, if that's okay. Um, so if um, if there's anybody that has any concerns with that, you know, please speak now. I don't think we need a formal vote. But if, if there are no concerns with that, we will move the Office of EJ to next month, and then we will proceed with the rest of the agenda items. Is that okay? Any opposition? Hearing none. Um, okay, great. Thank you, everybody. So with that, um, Larry, you are on deck to go ahead with your presentation, and you should be able to share your screen if you want to bring up your presentation. <clears throat> Uh, great, thank you, Daniela. Hello, everyone. Let me try and do that. Um, so, 
Can everyone see that? Yes. All right. <clears throat> well, I know we have a lot to cover, so I'll be brief, but I, I, I do want to give an a update on a couple of items. Um, so for everyone who doesn't know me, my name's Larry Hoffreiter. I'm, uh, I work for the planning department at the Port of San Diego. And um, wanted to first, I guess, update the full steering committee on uh, some action uh, on a, a item that went to our board of port commissioners last Tuesday. Um, essentially, um, we brought forward some, some information to the board, uh, information that, that I shared with the uh, subcommittee um, last month um, in terms of our truck survey and our cargo handling equipment inventory. And based upon that information, uh, last Tuesday, uh, our board directed staff to advocate that the following strategies be included in the AB 617 SERP. Um, so the first one here you can see is develop a short haul on road electric truck pilot program, um, replace high remitting cargo handling equipment, the 10th Avenue Marine Terminal with zero and near zero equipment and prioritize and invest in projects to reduce vessel emissions while at birth. Um, so uh, we, we, we feel like we, we have some, some good policy direction now from the board to continue to work with the, uh, the steering committee and the subcommittee. Um, the other item I, I wanted to update here is they also directed staff to, to start looking at some specific measurable emission reduction targets and goals. So, um, so that'll feed into the subcommittee report outs. Uh, let me go to the next slide here. Oh. Oh, there it is. Um, in, in addition to kind of those, those three main items, uh, they also directed staff to uh, support, including some of the additional uh, strategies that we're, we're learning about in the AB 617 plan, including the Harbor Drive study improvements um, that I think David has, has worked on a lot with the uh, Land Use Subcommittee, uh, short haul electric truck routes in either the city of San Diego or National City, um, feasibility analyses, electric truck parking, and the Pepper Park expansion. So once again, we just wanted to make sure that as we move along at a staff level and with the community that we bring, bring along our, our, our board of port commissioners and our decision makers along in that process. So with that, um, let me first report out on the AB 617 truck subcommittee. Um, we've met four times since our last steering committee meeting, and we've been digging into a lot of interesting topics. We've, we've had a professor talk about geofencing technology, we had uh, someone from <clears throat> uh, Volvo Trucks talk about the Volvo Lights project, which is a $90 million project that's uh, being pursued up in the uh, South Coast Air Quality Management District. We had Stephanie Lee from TransPower explain to us uh, about some of the electric truck technology. And we also um, had, um, <laughs> I don't know his last name, um, but a gentleman from overseas who is working on wireless inductive charging um, for buses and heavy duty trucks um, that, that might be something that, that the region wants to consider moving forward. So we, we've been kind of reaching out and kind of digging into a lot of these issues. Um, and this is just um, to, to give the steering committee something to chew on. This, this isn't finalized yet, but the way we're proceeding with some uh, the draft goals and strategies um, is, is in this format here. I'm not going to go through all of them, but you can see on the one hand, on the left-hand side, we're looking at advancing the deployment of heavy on-route electric trucks um, to demonstrate operational feasibility and to reduce emissions within the port side community. So that's kind of the overarching goal. Our strategy then, we have several strategies to help us reach that goal. One is the one we just talked about, develop and implement a short haul on-road electric truck pilot program. Um, two, install charging facilities to support that. Uh, three, work with community off-port operators to coordinate with operators for their transition to zero emission vehicles, uh, pursue grant funding, and to establish a Port of San Diego incentive program or fee uh, for use of non-ZEV. Um, so again, these are just kind of preliminary ideas. And then based upon those strategies, we're trying to piece together some specific performance metrics and objectives so we know at the end of the five-year period um, whether or not we're accomplishing what we set out to accomplish. Um, so if, uh, does anyone have any questions on the port, uh, uh, on the truck subcommittee uh, recommendations here? or anyone from the, the subcommittee that, that wants to add anything I, I might have overlooked? Uh, hi, this is Joy. 
I just wanted to note that several of you on the uh, steering committee signed on to the EHC letter to the Port Commission in support of those measures, and I wanted to thank you for doing that. That's all I had. Yes, thank you very much, Joy. Thank you very much, uh, uh, fellow steering committee members, for, again, supporting the port and, and our efforts um, uh, trying to move forward with some zero emission strategies. Thank you, Joy. Um, the other subcommittee I wanted to report on was the port subcommittee meeting. Um, so again, we've had uh, not so many outside speakers, but we've had the ILWU talk about uh, labor and equipment needs. Uh, the Navy Base San Diego um, has talked about some of their, uh, their plans moving forward to, to reduce emissions. And uh, NASCO has, has talked about how they're trying to coordinate with the other shipyards to identify some strategies um, along the working waterfront at our shipyards. Um, so this is, these are just a couple of slides that we took out of the report to our Board of Port Commissioners, but you can see here essentially what we found um, doing our inventory is that there's approximately 40 pieces of fossil fuel equipment being operated at the National City Marine Terminal and 62 pieces at the 10th Avenue Marine Terminal. However, because the, the nature of the operations are so different at the two terminals and the equipment differs, you can see that the vast majority of emissions, particularly NOx and DPM, are really associated with the activity at the 10th Avenue Marine Terminal. More specifically, you can see a DPM, diesel particulate matter, which is uh, ongoing uh, constituent of concern in, in, in our area, 97% um, is, is appears to be coming from the 10th Avenue Marine Terminal when, it, when we just look at cargo handling equipment. So what we did is we identified 28 pieces of cargo handling equipment um, that we want to prioritize um, to replace with uh, zero and near zero emission uh, pieces of equipment. You can, you can see there's examples listed here. Um, but once again, um, <clears throat> as a reminder, uh, us as the port, we don't own this equipment. Uh, they're owned by either our tenants or our terminal operators who operate at the terminal. So our goal here is to really identify the pieces that emit the most and then work with them uh, to try to um, get funding to, to replace their equipment with zero and near zero emissions equipment. And if we do that, if you look at this screen here, our estimates show that if we replace 28 pieces of the higher, highest emitting diesel equipment at 10th Avenue, we can essentially reduce uh, DPM um, by about 93% and NOx by 78%. So um, again, I, I think ultimately, I, I know our board is certainly interested in moving forward uh, with zero emissions technology and moving to a fully electric, but I think part of our goal here is to try to get the biggest bang for our buck and to try to reduce the most amount of emissions as quickly as possible. So, um, so this is essentially where we're at with the uh, uh, port subcommittee uh, meeting and recommendations. Um, our thoughts are to uh, probably identify uh, these performance standards uh, in the actual AB 617 SERP, um, such as you know, attain emission reduction associated with cargo handling equipment to attain 93% uh, reduction in DPM. And our thought there is if we can't get all the cargo handling equipment owners to re replace the equipment we identified, then we'll just have to work and, and replace additional uh, pieces to, to meet that performance standard. Um, so that's um, a high level overview of what our two subcommittees have been working on uh, these past, uh, this past month. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions and or if anyone from the subcommittees wants to add in, I'd uh, feel free to do so. Any comments? None? Okay, great. Thank you, Larry, for those uh, really great uh, thorough and clear uh, updates that you give us and, and for handling two committees. We appreciate that. Um, so next we'll go to um, David Flores for the um, for the land use subcommittee. Thank you, Daniela. Um, I don't have the, the presentation, a presentation to share 
uh, for land use, but I, I do have uh, the following update. So we have identified um, six projects that are area-wide projects in conjunction with um, SANDAG's uh, uh, military mobility uh, uh, projects. Um, the biggest ones that are um, high priority are uh, moving forward with blue line trolley rail grade separations at 28th Street and 32nd Street, um, uh, Choyas Creek multi-use path uh, from Dorothy, Dorothy Petway Park to Harbor Drive, 8th Street Urban Trail uh, in National City from Harbor Drive to D Avenue, um, uh, Bay Marina Drive active transportation connection, and uh, National City Wayfinding Project. So those projects have already been identified in uh, both Sandag work plan and with each of the cities. Um, and so those are, those are ones that um, have good uh, vetting up to this point. We just need to finish rounding that off. Um, there are other area-wide strategies that we need more, we will need more time to develop, like um, confirming with Caltrans on um, some kind of vegetative buffers along the I-5 where possible, um, and then um, ensuring that uh, the strategies um, that Larry was sharing are also supported um, to be advanced to the uh, ports maritime clean air strategy uh, moving forward. For the Harbor Drive multimodal study, we have identified uh, 16 uh, projects as improvements on the various lists um, that have to do with improving uh, traffic congestion or choke points as well as implementing um, active transportation, pedestrian or bicycle improvements, and safety improvements um, along, um, the, along Harbor Drive. Um, so those we are organizing um, in a better way to be able to insert into the SERP. Um, but they're more complicated because it crosses both City of San Diego and City of National City jurisdictions. Um, and we need more participation from the City of San Diego. We need more engagement also from the City of National City on additional land use strategies. For each of the communities, we have identified um, for National City 10 different additional strategies that have to do with supporting other green space development, as well as developing policies to, um, for existing sensitive receptors um, and residential uses to implement indoor air filtration. And so the actions that are happening um, because of uh, the, the, the Navy ship fire, um, we want a a, some kind of, of policy program to be developed long term for um, for sensitive receptors within either 500 or 1,000 feet of the port or the freeways. Um, same goes for uh, Barrio Logan. And then proposing uh, uh, additional um, truck route enforcement and expansion of the truck route um, in coordination with what's already uh, been developed um, and making sure that um, you know there's enough uh, uh, education uh, through both the port and the city of San Diego to move those forward. So we are making our list of projects that we will present as a first set into the CERP, but we know we will need to insert a second set where we need active participation from the city of San Diego City of National City and their land use um, and, and planning uh, departments to make sure that we can um, have some commitments to, to move forward. Thanks. Thank you, David. Um, with that, we'll go to Ashley Rocia Tremonti for the update from the SERP um, subcommittee. Thank you, Daniela, um, and I will try to keep it brief as requested. Um, so since our last steering committee meeting, the SERP subcommittee has met twice, once on July 7th and once on July 14th. Um, at our July 7th meeting, the California Air Resources Bo uh, Board provided an overview of the emissions inventory process. 
Um, there was one question uh, that came up during their presentation regarding the use, or, or I'm sorry, regarding the development of the vehicle miles traveled metric and the emissions from the transportation sector. Um, and CARB clarified that they're utilizing uh, Sandag's model <clears throat> and the latest series to develop a VMT for the area and utilizing emission factors um, from MFAC 2017 um, in order to produce those transportation related emissions for the boundaries of this project. Um, we also had a brief discussion or a discussion at the 7, uh, July 7th meeting regarding potential SERP actions and strategies. Um, and it sounds like there's quite a few recommendations from the other three subcommittees as well um, on potential strategies. We had introduced during that meeting um, an Excel spreadsheet that was developed of APCD suggested uh, strategies and then also examples from both Long Beach and West Oakland. Um, ultimately, uh, during that meeting, we decided to, um, that subcommittee members needed more time to have any sort of formal proposals around uh, any potential strategies for the SERP. And we decided to carry that discussion into the July 14th um, meeting. So going into the July 14th meeting, um, just before the, the meeting on that day, it was requested that we include on the agenda an update uh, regarding the, the boat fire that has been discussed at this meeting tonight. Um, and an update was provided by uh, Jim Sweeney at the APCD and noted that at the time, a notice of violation and odor nuisance had been issued to the Navy by the Air Pollution Control District. And that at that time, the port was working with cities uh, to assist community members that were being affected. Um, we also had a brief follow-up on the previous week's presentation from the CARB inventory uh, regarding the GHG emissions, or I'm sorry, regarding the emissions inventory. Um, and there were at that time, no additional comments from the subcommittee noted. Um, and then moving on to the continuation of the strategies discussion, um, the APCD, or Jim rather, started the discussion with uh, just an overview of the philosophy regarding the strategies. And so requesting that those that are proposed are within the Air Pollution Control District's purview and have a, a nexus to air quality. Um, it was uh, clarified uh, through a question from a subcommittee member that a proposed strategy could include support for a plan or other action that's happening outside of the district's purview. Um, so that strategy or that action would be to support something that's happening um, that another agency or some other organization is pursuing. Um, we also started to review the Excel spreadsheet um, and include comments and revisions to those suggestions that were um, already there. Um, I've also made the spreadsheet available on Google Docs. And if there's any um, steering committee member that would like access to it, I'm happy to uh, provide that as sort of a, a space to start consolidating all the recommendations um, and also happy to take any feedback or input on the structure of that spreadsheet, if there's any um, information categories that folks feel might be missing and would like to be included, uh, we can edit that to be more uh, comprehensive of the information you'd like to have sent to APCD for recommendation. Um, but yeah, so with that, that is, that's my update from the, the SERP subcommittee. If there's any questions or if there's any other update that I missed that any other subcommittee members would like to make. Joy, did you want to see your comment in the chat box? Did you want to share that or no? Um, no, I'm good. I think people can read that there. Well, anything else? David, I see your hand. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to say that I think we still need steps to be able to understand when we need to submit by. Um, because, for example, in land use, we'll have a first set of, of strategies. And then and the second set that were that still needs a little bit more time. So we should set a goal for when we need to submit, maybe by the end of this month, and then identify how the SERP uh, subcommittee or the APCD is going to report back to the entire committee um, the final list of, of strategies. Because I'm not sure between now and the next meeting in August if um, if we're going to have an, another opportunity to be all together. 
Thank you, David. And that leads us right into the next up item, which is an update from the S uh, Air Pollution Control District staff on their effort and process for the SERP update. So with that, I want to hand it over to both Rob Rader and to Jim Sweeney um, to give that update. Jim, I'll, I'll, I'll let you, you take it away, um, and I'll be happy to offer comments afterward. comments afterward. Okay, um, can everybody hear me? Okay, good. I'm using three different types of technology right now, so this is kind of a fun thing. Right, so to address David's points, which is what I was going to be talking about here, um, so as Ashley mentioned, we set up a spreadsheet that people can put their ideas about potential strategies on. All that is is a clearing house. Um, we will use that, we will pull from that for the draft SERP, but don't think that you have to wait for something to be approved for it to go on onto that spreadsheet. We want to gather the ideas um, to get what's going on. As far as timing, um, we've shared the same timeline that we presented in May. That hasn't changed. You'll see that the first thing on this timeline is a draft SERP plan going to the steering committee at the August meeting. So at that point, we will have the strategies as they exist at that point, ready to give to the steering committee for their input. Again, this is the draft plan. It is not the final plan. In September, we will go through workshops, public workshops, um, take the input that the steering committee gives in August, any input we get at the workshops, either before, during, or after the workshops, to bring a final plan back to the steering committee for its approval in October. Once we have that, then we go to the district's board in November, and assuming they um, approve it, we send that off to CARB for their review. Now, as you may recall, this committee did ask for additional time and CARB gave a really nice, much more than I thought they'd be able to give, um, letter back, which outlines that we need to submit what we can, what we have done by the end of the year, and identify the things that we're still working on and a potential timeline for working on those. And so we may not have all of the strategies fully discussed, fully vetted, ready to be put in at this by the end of the year. And that's okay. As long as we have an idea about what we're doing and we can explain that, that we're still investigating this or we're still seeking support for this other one, whatever it happens to be. So that talks about the timelines. I would say for inclusion in the draft SERP, and this goes back to David's specific question, end of the month would be fantastic to get your thoughts into that. Now, what can we put in as a strategy? And this gets back to something that Ashley mentioned. And I want to clarify that a little bit. We're fine putting anything into the plan um, as long as there is an air quality nexus to it. And we can be a little creative with that. We had a suggestion for sidewalks, um, paving sidewalks, putting sidewalks in to encourage people to walk and not drive. There's your air quality nexus. And it either needs to be something that the air district has control over, or if it's another agency, if we have approached them and they've committed to it, we can put that commitment in the SERP. If we don't have that commitment, we can put in that we will facilitate discussions and support getting that commitment. Um, that's the authority that we have for what can go into a SERP. Additionally, um, within the district, we're going to be starting some internal um, weekly or biweekly management um, meetings to progress better and faster on development of everything. Progresar más rápido. Hay como cinco o seis partes, dependiendo de cómo lo ven. Y eso lo podemos tener listo para, para que 
el comité lo vea en agosto. No es un documento corto que se va a tener que revisar semanas anteriores para que puedan ver qué es lo que hay allí. Entonces, a lo mejor eso a lo mejor no lo vamos a tener totalmente listo para el final de año. Pero uh, ahí estamos en esto. No sé si alguien más tiene alguna pregunta en cuanto a eso. Yo sé que va a mencionar algunas cosas sobre este tópico, pero eso es lo que yo quisiera hablar el día de hoy. Usted, usted presentó lo que yo quería enfatizar, que el comité... Es esencialmente, como lo leo, no pueden mover la deadline para cuando el documento es due a CARB, pero tenemos alguna discreción en lo que está incluido. Um, and so for those items for which we have firm commitment, um, we can put those in the plan now, but those strategies that we're still working toward, um, you know, getting vetted and getting commitment, particularly if other agencies are involved, um, that we would just document where we're at, what we've achieved thus far, um, and what additional steps we are taking and by when, um, to to get resolution on on those strategies so um we are we are committed to putting in there as much as we can as much as many commitments as we can get um but to the extent that um we'll be having to move forward here just within a, a couple of months with a plan um a or b made clear in its response as i read it um that it, 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 it's okay if we still have some priorities um yet to address but we just need to document those Um, and, and how we decided those are priorities, and then and then and then move forward from there. My understanding is that the ARB board would not be actually considering approval of what we submit. Um, rather, they would they would. Um, it sounds to me as though they would um, go back to their board at a future date um, once we have completed. Um, all elements of the SERP so that it, it, we're ready to go with every strategy in there. So, so essentially, um, it'll be a status update to the board, um, documenting everything um, you've all done thus far, all the great work that's going on and the great work that will continue, essentially. So um, I, I guess I just kind of repeated what you said, Jim. So thank you for your time. But um, I, that, that was the main thing I wanted to emphasize. Thank you, Rob, for that, and Jim, and thank you to the district management team for your commitment to this committee and the CERT. Um, so I'm, I have two comments. Um, it, I've been asked, so we're running behind. If you have a comment on this item, if you can raise your hand now. Um, and uh, if not, then after the two questions that I have here, we'll go on to the next agenda item, which is CARB's presentation on the in emissions inventory. So um, I think, Maisie, your hand was up first, and then Ashley, so we can go ahead, Maisie. Um, thank you. And um, Jim, I was wondering, the SERP strategies, are they identified and evaluated sort of in connection to the APCD monitoring results or or based on, you know, the relative significance of, you know, emissions from different um, source types? So there's going to be different strategies um, addressing different um, concerns. Some of those will align nicely with what um, the emissions inventory shows as being the top pollution sources. Some of those will align with um, what could be considered not necessarily from top emission sources, but possibly top risk sources. So it may not have as much emissions, but may have a higher toxic level. Um, and so you'll see a variety of strategies in there and that's perfectly fine we haven't had as much monitoring data as we were hoping to get by this time due to challenges in place in getting approvals and placing equipment that Bill has talked about in um, past meetings. But we can, we should be able to make a good nexus with any of those based on the emissions inventory. And CARB is gonna be, uh, the next item is CARB giving an overview of how that inventory is developed. So Massey, did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Missy. Now, um, go ahead, Ashley. Uh, thank you, Daniela. So just to be super clear, Jim, July 31st is going to be the date 
that all of the suggestions for potential strategies need to be provided to APCD, is that correct? Um, to ensure that we can include them in the draft sort of going to the steering committee in August, yes. Now, if something comes in August 1st, August 5th, we'll incorporate that if we can. Um, but to ensure that we can get it into the document in time, July 31st sounds good. Okay, great. And I just, thank you. Okay, great. And I just put that in the chat again. And sorry, I didn't put a space between August and review, but wonderful. Are there any other comments? Any comments from the public on this if it was your first meeting and you're interested in learning more? Any any comments? I don't see any hands. Wonderful. Okay, so with that, we have a lot of staff from CARB um, on the line and the California Air Resources Board to present. So I'm going to go ahead and allow Jenny Melgo to take over and share her screen. And we're going to um, go. Uh, to the presentation where on um, carbs um, emissions inventory. So Jenny Melgo, um, if you want to go ahead and, and introduce your yourself and your team. Yep. And to flag as we as we transition the screen sharing, we are going to be probably about like ten minutes past eight. So I'm I'm so sorry for those of you who who have to leave. But if you want to in the chat and indicate that you need to leave right at eight, thank you. And if not, sorry. Um, I mean, if you have to leave, sorry. Well, can you? Hear me? Um, can, let me know if you can see my my yes, presentation. Hear you when we see your screen. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay. One second. So, good evening, everyone. My name is Jenny Melgo. I am part of the Community Emission Inventory Group at the California Air Resources Board. I also have my colleagues, um, Adrian Cayabia, Alejandra Cervantes, Abhishek Dima, and Victoria Villa, and Sharanya to help answer any questions you may have on our presentation today. My goal is to give you an overview of the emission inventory for the Portside EJ neighborhoods community, focusing on carbs area and mobile sources. Um, before we get started, we want to thank you, the SERP subcommittee members for their engagement and comments when we presented this same information to them earlier this month. So emission inventories are estimates of the amount and type of pollutants emitted into the atmosphere by air pollution sources in a region, including industrial facilities, mobile sources, and area-wide sources. There are fundamental, fundamental components of any air quality plan. AB 617 calls for the use of emission inventories and community emissions reduction programs to identify emission sources, establish baseline emissions, set emission targets, and reduction measures, and to track emissions emission reduction in communities selected for a community emissions reduction programs. CAR blueprints um, for community air protection and related emission inventory documents provide details on the development of the community scale emission inventory. District and CAR has been, um, have been working together for the last few months to develop emission inventory for the port side community to help understand existing sources of air pollution and where these occur in the community. Emission sources are usually broken into four major categories. Stationary sources, which the district oversees, and this includes sources like shipyards, industrial facilities, or, or auto body shops. Area sources, which both CARB and the district work together on, and some examples include consumer products, commercial cork, cooking, or residential fuel combustions. And on-road mo on mobile sources, which CAR works on, this categories, category includes cars and trucks. And finally, on off-road mobile sources, which CAR also works on, and this category includes ocean-going vessels, trains, off-road equipments like forklifts. For purposes of accounting emissions, we are using a one-by-one -one kilometer grid as shown here on the map in gray lines. As you can see, the one kilometer grid in some areas extends beyond the community boundary for the port side community. This table shows the overall summary of the total 2018 emissions by pollutant and major source categories for the port side community. The emission values under the stationary row are draft values that came from reported point sources emission in CARB Cedars database. District staff are finishing the updates to stationary point source emissions. 
Just a note, this presentation shows diesel PM emissions or DPM as an example of toxics. However, all toxic pollutants will be included in the full inventory that we will provide to the district to include in the CERT. In the following slides, I will provide more information on the sources within the area and more wet source categories that are contributing to the total emissions in the community. As I said earlier, district oversees stationary source emissions. Submit these to CARBS and then CARB compiles this information and makes it available to public using the available web platforms. District will soon provide the latest and greatest stationary point sources emissions for the port side community in the coming weeks. As I mentioned before, for the community emission inventories, we have allocated community specific emissions using a one by one kilometer grid. The emission inventories developed, de developed for this presentation were based on the most up-to-date information available. District staff are working on updating the 2018 stationary source emissions and will provide details on when the assessment is complete. Area and off-road source emissions were based on the latest CARB state implementation plan emission inventory with a base year of 2017. The emissions were projected from the 2017 base year to 2018 using the most up-to-date growth and control factors available. For on-road vehicles, emissions were developed using the latest vehicle activity data from the San Diego Metropolitan Planning Organization and emission factors from CARB's latest on-road emission factor model, NFAC 2017. We use spatial surrogates to allocate the regional level 2018 emissions to a more specific location resulting in a high resolution one by one kilometer grid emissions for each community. This allows us to better characterize the sources and emissions within the community. Example of special surrogates includes population, employment, housing, land cover, VMT, etc. This conceptual diagram shows how county level area source and off-road mobile source emissions are drilled down to the community. Emissions are estimated at a county level using relevant activity data. For example, car survey data for consumer products or port data for ocean going vessels and emission factors specific to the source category. Then the county level emission for each source are distributed to more specific location using the appropriate um, spatial circuit or location information representative to that category. For example, population for consumer product, ship lanes for ocean going, show ocean going vessel. This result to a high, re high resolution grid emissions for the community as shown on the map to the right. The charts, the chart displays the major source categories contributing to each pollutant for area sources. For nitrogen oxides, residential fuel combustion contributes majority of the total emissions. For reactive organic gases, consumer products contribute 56% of the total emissions followed by architectural coating. For particulate matter 2.5 microns or smaller, commercial coking contribute 46% of the emissions followed by construction and demol demolition. The map shows the distribution of reactive organic gases emissions for the area sources, which follows the residential areas along the northern to eastern part of the community due to a large part of the emissions for reactive organic gases are coming from consumer products. The charts display the major source categories contributing to each pollutant for off-road mobile sources, commercial hardware craft, off-road equipment, ocean going vessels, and recreational boats are the main contributors of nitrogen oxide, reactive organic gases, particulate matter 2.5 microns are smaller, and diesel particulate matter emissions. The map shows the distribution of diesel particulate matter emissions throughout the community where the darker grids highlights location where major source of diesel particular matter occur, like along the port area. 
We also want to bring up everyone's information in single grid located outside of the emission study boundary circle of the map. We included this grid cell here because it had outbreak emissions from dock cruise ships. If we all agree to keep this grid as part of the community inventory for the port side community, we will update our emissions to include this grid cell for all source categories. For on our mobile sources, we estimated emissions by taking the latest vehicle activity data for each road segment from the San Diego Association of Governments or SANDAG 2019 Regional Transportation Plan and applied vehicle distribution and emission factors from CARS MPAC 2017 or on-road emission inventory model. The chart shows what type of vehicles are contributing to each pollutant in on-road mobile sources. Light duty vehicles or LDV like the cars you and I drive are the main contributors for nitrogen oxide, reactive organic gases, and particulate matter 2.5 microns or smaller, while heavy heavy duty vehicles or HHDV and medium heavy du duty vehicles or MHDV like semi trucks or big rigs are the main contributors to diesel particulate matter emissions. The map shows the distribution of diesel particulate matter emissions throughout the community. The darker grids follow along the freeways and the major arterial roads where most of the emissions occur due to the higher vehicle miles travel happening there. This sums up my presentation. Next steps, as I mentioned before, we are working with the district and CSC and expect to finalize the area and mobile source emission inventory by the end of this month. Also, as the district completes the analysis of the license plate data collected in the community last summer using student interns as part of a test case to use automated license plate reader data or LFPR to refine model mobile source inventory. We will update the owner mobile source inventory to reflect community specific vehicle fleet mix. Um, your support for a license plate data collection study and your testimony for testimony was instrumental for the district to propose and the board to adopt the ALPR policy last, no last November. And we are so grateful for that. If you have any recommendations or inputs that you can share with the district and us you further, to further refine and improve the inventory, please let us know. Well, we can discuss it today or you can email it to CARB or district staff anytime after this meeting. All your comments are welcome, much appreciated, and always very helpful. Thanks everyone for listening and open for questions. Thank you, Jenny. I appreciate that. Um, are there any questions or comments from the steering committee? Um, go ahead, Sarah. Yes, thank you. Um, so I have a question. Um, you explained the gridded emissions for uh, um, the mobile sources, uh, but for the stationary sources, it was it just that we looked at the stationary sources in the three zip codes that are in port side, or did you also look at stationary sources that were outside of port side? Um, district can further can answer your question on that. I think they're the better, for, you know, like position to answer that. I mean, Jim, do you mind? Yeah. Hi. This is Jim. Um, We've included all of the stationary sources that are within the boundary that was selected for the port side area. But they're all within three zip codes, right? I'm actually not sure about the zip codes, quite honestly. I know that they were within that, that boundary. Okay. And so what a person would do would go to the uh, CIDARES database and uh, query the data for those industries that are in those zip codes and you should come close to these numbers? You, that is correct. Um, but we also will be including that in one of the appendices to the SERP. That's part of the source attribution portion of the SERP. Okay. I just thought the numbers looked a little high for the, the industry base that we have there. So I'll, I'll check it again. Great, thank you, Sarah. Any other comments or questions 
in the steering committee? Okay, seeing none, um, I'm gonna thank the ARB team for, for their participation in this evening, their patience. Um, uh, the delay, um, we, I think we all agree, it was very important to have the community speak this during the first part of the meeting. Um, with that, um, we're going to move on to the last presentation um, with Nick Cormier from the Air District, who's been very patient to bring us a very uh, important update on the district's plan to um, reduce ozone pollution, more commonly referred to as smog pollution. So um, Nick is ready to go and take it away. And Ashley and Roman, um, good luck with your kids and um, thank you for um, joining us today. Great. Uh, thank you, Danielle. Hopefully everybody can hear me and can see the uh, presentation at the moment. Yes. Um, so I will go ahead and, sorry, go ahead. one sec. Um, so good evening, everyone. Um, again, my name is Nick Cormier from APCD. Uh, thank you for allowing me to present here today. Uh, the APCD has collaborated with the EPA and CARB to draft a new plan that provides the blueprint for how the region will further reduce air pollution in order to attain the national ambient air quality standards for ozone. The following presentation provides an overview of that draft plan. Ozone pollution is formed when common air pollutants emitted by all types of sources, including vehicles, off-road equipment, factories, consumer products, and other sources chemically react under the influence of sunlight and heat. This ozone is harmful to breathe and therefore is regulated as an air pollutant. San Diego's topography and climate are well suited for ozone formation. Air pollution blows eastward across the inland valleys where a chemical reaction occurs in the presence of heat and sunlight forming ozone. The ozone gets trapped under the inversion layer at around 2,000 feet in elevation around the elevation of San Diego's Alpine Monitor. Though ozone levels are lower in the coastal plains, the entire region is considered ozone non-attainment because sources throughout the region contribute to ozone pollution and downward alpine. In short, ozone makes it harder to breathe. Children and seniors are at increased risk of health impacts. So are people with existing lung disease and those who spend time outdoors. And because ozone is fueled by sunshine, ozone concentrations are highest in the spring and summer months and in the inland areas. The APCD is part of a coordinated three-tiered approach to regulating and cleaning up ozone and other air pollution comprised of the EPA, CARB, and APCD. Each have their own respective regulatory authority and certain, over certain sources of air pollution. What actions have we done to improve air quality? Here's a high level overview. The APCD and CARB have developed hundreds of rule, rules and regulations to control and reduce air pollution from stationary and mobile sources. Additionally, both agencies have concentrated on incentive and enforcement programs, which are key to reducing pollution in the region. As a result of these actions, air quality in the San Diego region currently meets five of the six health-based standards or limits set by the EPA. Ozone is the only air pollutant in the region that does not meet the respective national standards. This is the purpose of the draft ozone attainment plan. Though we, rem though we remain in non-attainment status, emissions of ozone forming emissions have been trending downward as a result of clean air actions highlighted earlier. As can be seen here, Emissions have dropped by 58% since 2000. In fact, ozone-forming emissions are now at their lowest levels on record. These emission reductions have resulted in improved air quality. This is the trend line for ozone pollution as measured at Alpine, where ozone levels have trended downward over the years. The chart makes it clear that additional progress is necessary in order to meet the standards and protect public health throughout the region. Among, air, among other pollutants, ACLMA's mobile monitoring activities in Portside in 2019 detected below average ozone levels in the Portside area. Data determined levels of ozone at healthy levels in Portside and San Ysidro Otay Mesa during the study period, averaging between 10 to 40 parts per billion at all times. While this is good news, it was for a short time and there is always more, we, we, there is always more work to do to further reduce air pollution on a local and regional level, as has been very clearly uh, indicated by the community members we heard from tonight. 
mobile sources, which are regulated at the state and federal levels, emit 90% of the regional NOx in San Diego and are the number one challenge to attaining the ozone standards. This underscores the importance of the district's efforts to facilitate mobile source emission reductions through incentive and compliance programs. Climate change and rising temperatures are another challenge to the region's ozone attainment efforts. San Diego experienced average annual temperatures well above average in recent years, but since greenhouse gases are often co-emitted with ozone-forming pollutants, the two problems can be tackled together. Before moving ahead, I want to put emission reductions in a perspective. One ton per day of emission reductions is approximately equal to 350,000 average passenger cars in the region, uh, the emissions from those cars. Ozone forming emissions are projected to continue to decline in the region with a 10% drop by 2026 and a 14% drop by 2032 compared to 2020 levels. This will be achieved by continued EPCD rulemaking for stationary sources, as well as additional incentive program offerings in the next few years. Similarly, CARB has committed to further reducing pollution through upcoming regulatory activities. All of these actions will help us achieve the reductions in VOC and NOx we need to attain each ozone standard. The draft ozone plan will also require a 30% drop in on-road transportation emissions by 2026 and a 40% drop by 2032 relative to 2020 emission levels. Going forward, SANDAG's transportation, transportation plans will need to demonstrate that the total emissions from implementing the transportation plans will not exceed the reduced emission levels shown here. CARB has conducted air quality modeling to forecast San Diego's future ozone levels as part of this attainment plan. The model predicts that ozone levels will continue declining as a result of the projected emission reductions. And the, and the region is predicted to attain the 2008 ozone standard in 2026 and the 2015 ozone standard in 2032. These timelines are consistent with that of a severe non-attainment area for both standards and exceed our current classification for both ozone standards. Federal law does allow more time to attain the standards if warranted, but along with it, the Clean Air Act also requires additional requirements associated with being a severe non-attainment area. Businesses will have to do more to clean the air. For example, facilities emitting over 25 tons per year in, in Title V and new source review programs will now be encompassed into such programs, whereas only facilities emitting over 50 or 100 tons per year are required today. Other more stringent requirements will also apply with the overall goal of further reducing air pollution from stationary sources. Here are next steps for the draft plan. We released the draft document and corresponding CEQA analysis for review on July 1st. Comments are due to the APCD by July 31st. If appropriate, we will then be seeking to go to the APCD's board for consideration in late September for approval, as well as CARB's board consideration in late October. Attached is our contact information in case you need to reach out to any of us. The plans can be downloaded at the link on the screen. Uh, we also have fact sheets on ozone and simple ways that residents can be part of the solution to reduce air pollution. Both fact sheets are now available in English and Spanish as of today, uh, and both are, are available on the website. And uh, that is all I have today. Thank you for letting me present, but I'd be happy to take any questions. And if there aren't any, uh, I understand people want, probably want to get going, uh, <laughs> get on with their nights, but um, feel free to reach out to me or you can send me uh, comments via email all the way up till July 31st or even shortly thereafter. Um, that'll be fine. Um, so just wanted to thank everyone for allowing me to speak today. Thank you, Nick. And uh, I gave Nick seven minutes and he ended exactly at 8.07. So I want to um, uh, con just congratulate you on that. Are there any questions or comments from the steering committee or members of the public regarding the presentation? If so, um, you want to raise your hand, please, so we can call on you. All right. I don't see any hands up. So um, uh, I just want to thank everybody again for joining us um, this evening. Uh, for our July meeting and for accommodating, uh, being accommodating with the adjustment in time for the public testimony. Um, we will uh, be back here again um, next month um, on uh, to August 25th. Um, so uh, we, same Zoom information. Again, we want to um, 
reiterate that to the steering committee members that we do have uh, vacancies for uh, community residents in particular on the steering committee and members of the public that joined today. If you're interested in applying, you can go to the Air District's website for the AB617 uh, page to find the application there or contact information for myself or AD, uh, Air Pollution Control District staff that can help you. Um, at the August meeting, we will be um, diving into whatever status the draft of the SERP is and also uh, having the brainstorm conversation on the Office of Environmental Justice. Um, are there any other comments before we leave today? Yeah, this is David. Go ahead, David, and then Sandy. Um, I just want to circle back on the on the conversation of stipends and if um, that has been, if there has been a direction on, on whether um, that's going to be done through, um, you know, through one of the partner agencies um, or um, how that's going to move forward? Car CARB has actually been looking at maybe making the payments directly from the state. Um, but in, in the meantime, our county council is still looking um, to try and find ways to make it happen. So we can provide an update on that at the August meeting. And thank you, um, David. Uh, and Sandy? Go ahead. Yeah, just real quick. I know everyone's tired. Um, um, the question is directed towards APCD staff. There was a lot of, you know, um, testimony and there was comments in the chat. I'm wondering if we can have an agenda item docketed to answer because there were some great questions brought up from the community to address how we can move forward on community's concerns with the Navy fire. I'll let Rob start. Great idea. Let's do it. Uh, absolutely. And in terms of, you know, we're publishing all the data we have, um, but, you know, as we, as we work with the Navy and learn more, we'll, we'll be transparent about that. But any of the data we've collected, we're actually um, posting on our website. But I acknowledge it's, it's challenging for some people to understand what they're looking at. Um, I'll acknowledge that. And so we have to work on um, a communication strategy as well. Um, but but we, all the data we're collecting is up on, on our website. If you just go to stapcd.org, it's in both English and Spanish for the most part. Well, um, let us know if you think um, improvements are needed. But um, and anyway, just wanted that perspective out there. But yes, let's let's keep discussing this. And just we may want to consider having a, a special meeting outside of the regularly scheduled monthly meetings, just given the the time coming up with the SERP and just the 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 specificity of the Navy element. Um, and so just throwing that out there as a facilitator, trying to keep us on track to get our SERP finalized. Thank you. Yeah, And we, we were listening very intently and, you know, it's our responsibility to pull all that data together. We've got, you know, parts of it over here, parts of it over there. It's all measured by different ways and it's up to us to bring it together in a way that you can understand. We did see some things in, in the, some of the air samples that, you know, make us wonder what's in there. It definitely looks like a lot of fuel was being burned and things, but we don't really know what was in that chip. So, you know, it, it's some, it's an ongoing process and we're going to continue to work on it. So we, we were listening. Thank you. Um, thank you for that. So we'll provide an update on that. Uh, we'll, we'll circle in with the staff and see how we proceed, but thank you for raising that, Sandy. And um, great. Uh, another the reminder just to uh, steering committee members and the, from the community, if you want to have an alternate, st start thinking if you have neighbors that you want to join the committee, uh, there's an application online. I keep on, I sound like a salesperson all through the meeting, but um, uh, we do have those vacancies. And I said the meeting would end by 8.15, and so we are going to end at 8.13. Um, unless anyone else has any other comments. Um, I just want to thank everybody, thank all the community residents that shared their moving testimony. Um, muchas gracias a todos que compartieron su testimonio, especialmente Alicia con su filtro. Alicia, your filter was wow. Um, so thank you all, and thank you for your leadership in the community and at the Air District. So appreciate you all. Have thank a great you. day. Thank you, Daniela. Thanks, everyone. Thank all right. you. Good night. Bye. See you next month. Bye. Bye. Okay. Yeah. I'm copying and pasting the chat so that I have an accurate chat. So.
Okay. There was quite a bit in the chat tonight, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got all the way to the top. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna scroll down. Okay. Thank you, everybody. And Stephanie, are you still on listening? I see your name there still. Yeah, I'm just. <laughs> I was in the middle of changing the diaper, so I hadn't quite logged off yet. But, oh, um, <laughs> I, I have a, a two-year-old and a four-year-old, so I understand the diapers. I just wanted to say that maybe Bill and I may want to find some time with you later. Um, I know you're busy, but to schedule maybe like an onboarding to the process to the yeah. yeah, I think I think that would be good. I reached out to Shayla, um, and she kind of gave me like a really quick kind of rundown of, of what she'd been doing, but um, I was trying to get from her, you know, kind of how, I mean, especially since I'm not an environmental health specialist, like I'm, I'm obviously interested in this, this sort of field, but um, I, was, I was trying to find, pick her brain as to how I might be the most useful to the committee. Um, or, and, and so, yeah, if, if you want to find um, a time, I would totally be happy to kind of spend some time and, and kind of get up to speed. Great. I'll start. I'll send. I'll send an email out to you, me, and Bill, and to and to find that time and with Chewy, um, so we can do that. And thank you so much. Okay. How old is your baby? She is one and a half now. <laughs> so, yeah, my kids are almost the same age as yours. Then I have a four-year-old and the one and a half. So. Oh, awesome. Um, <laughs> I turned two yesterday. So yeah. Oh. Uh, well, congrats. Happy birthday to your kid. And um. Yeah, I'll look for your email, but I, I want to say, like, you've got very good managerial skills for meetings. And <laughs> so I, I just want to say good job on that. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, great. Well, wonderful. Bye. Bye, baby. Okay. Oh, bye, Bill. Bye. Okay, Chris. Okay, I'm going to end the meeting now.